you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we don't just become strong we are made strong South Africa, please hear me, house of treasures, the body of believers. Excelling in this end time will be more than, it, would, it will require more than a well-intentioned heart. You will need to train your hearing and you will need to train your seeing. There are many parents today who have led their children to paths that are inconsistent with God's program for their destiny because they did not have the seeing eye and the hearing ear. There are many people doing business today that they cannot secure the favor of God because that is not the blueprint of God for them. There are many people today who were doing what God said yesterday. That's why they prospered yesterday. But God said something else today I told you the power of God follows what God is saying. So if God moved this way in 2000 and I align with him, you will see increase. But if God has moved this way and I refuse to move, are we together? Apostle, I heard God. You are right. But are you hearing God now? The Spirit speaketh expressly. Please, those of you in ministry, this is not a pastor's conference, but I want you to please, by the message of God, listen carefully. Do not get too familiar with the pathway that was given to you yesterday. God is dynamic, and you must master the navigation system of the Spirit. You must know when seasons come to an end. You must know when the, your relevance in physical locations come to an end. Not knowing this can cost you, you can abort 30 years of relevance because you missed a moment of sight. Watch this. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Listen to me. When Jesus resurrected apostle, the Bible says the disciples who had been trained under his mentorship, they came quickly because I want to show you now how to get the hearing and the seeing eye. Are we together? They came to the grave and looked and they did not see anything there. They went back in fear. But the Bible said a woman. A woman got to the sepulcher and she looked and she remained there. She didn't go. She kept looking and kept looking and kept looking. And when she kept looking, she saw a man moving in the garden. And she said, where have they taken my Lord? And she looked again. She said, Rabboni. She wanted to touch me. She said, do not touch me. But you have seen me indeed. Now because you have seen, I empower you. Go and tell them what you have seen. Listen. This is an, a prophetic adumbration of what God is doing in the church in the end time. There are people who have not been mandated to go because they have not stayed to see. It is only the one who saw the resurrected Christ. Don't tell me I saw the crucified Christ. Congratulations. But we are talking about the one who has risen. She saw. The disciples came to the same location. They didn't see anything. But now, Mary stood. She waited. Nothing else was important. She stayed there. And her reward for remaining was that she saw. And she was commissioned by reason of having a seen eye. Go to the disciples. The first person to announce the resurrection. Hallelujah. The Bible says Hagar, having been driven by Sarah and Ishmael, they were in the wilderness. She was about to die of thirst. Yet there was an oasis in that wilderness. But she could not see it. 
she was crying the young lad was crying and the Bible says the Lord heard the voice of the young lad and he came to Hagar what is this I'm about to die he said no look and immediately she saw an oasis when Abraham stopped at the command of God from killing his son he said where then will I get the sacrifice and he said look all the while there is a ram that has been there only God knows how many things are around you but simply because of the absence of the seeing eye the Lord just gave you a prayer request tonight the seeing eye Habakkuk said I will stand upon my word and set myself up that was the true light that lighted every ministry that was the true light Lord, where is my place? Where is my portion in South Africa? Where is my portion in, in the global events of things you are doing? You are a man of God. It's time to stop going around, just roaming around. Lord, where is my portion? What is it? Show me, reveal to me. What is the jurisdiction of my relevance and contribution as far as your program is concerned? Listen, God never designed for just a few people to be celebrated in life and ministry at the expense of others. But you are at the mercy of the correctness of your sight. Jeremiah 1 verse 11. Jeremiah 1 verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah... I have spoken to you and you have heard me. But it's not your ears I need alone. It says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah said, I see a rod of an almond tree. The reply, verse 12. Thou hast seen correctly. It means you can see wrongly. It is possible to see men as trees. It is possible to see your destiny helper as an enemy. It is possible to see a prophet as your brother. Thou hast seen correctly. It says, for I will hasten my word that you have seen. Not my word that is available. The one you have seen. Amplified says, for I am alert and active. Watching over my word to perform it. Listen. Please sit down. You see. What makes others to expand and increase, whether in ministry or in business? It is not just because God decided to handpick them as against others. They found out that your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon your ability to hear and your ability to see. Are we together now? And they did what Mary did. Now, pay attention. Do you know what Mary did? Mary waited upon the Lord. Do you know what it means to wait upon the Lord? To wait upon the Lord is not just to fast. <laughs> to wait upon the Lord means to honor his person to the point that if he does not speak and give you a direction, you are not moving. Moses... Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. In other words, I am not ready to labor in vain. I know, I know the risk that I will incur sojourning without the guarantee of your presence. He said, we are in a hurry. We want to get to the other side, but be rest assured, we are not such in a hurry as to go without you. Let me tell you the truth. Those who run, are those who wait. It's a mystery in this kingdom. The secret of speed is to master the art of waiting. This is the secret behind the grace and the glory of great men. Those who seem to be running at a speed that cannot be explained are people who have mastered the art of the altar. They know the value of waiting until his word comes. Remember, prophet Samuel as a baby, the first thing he did to hear the voice of God was he slept close to the ark. 
The secret of hearing him is to make sure you are not far from the ark. Hmm. Above the cherubims, below the mercy seat, there I will meet with you. For as long as your spiritual life and your work with God is just a necessary activity, I need to hurry up and make money. When I come back, I will bribe God with five or ten minutes of time. Forget about increase and forget about enlargement. Listen carefully. When I teach you the other factors, I will be showing you something very profound. There are many people who's not rising is not demonic. It was God himself that kept them at that level as an act of his mercy because the kind of stamina it takes to survive the attacks. Listen, there are demonic spirits that follow mantles, not men. They don't care who the individual is. All they are concerned, if you are Elijah, Jezebel is looking for you. She's not looking for the man, Elijah. She's looking for the one who has the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. If you are Samson, prepare. Delilah is not a woman. Delilah is a spirit that distracts. Only personified in a woman. If you are Moses, don't talk about leading people till you know what to do with Pharaoh. There are many people who want to rise and have not mastered the art and the stamina. There are realms, my brothers and sisters, where you must be equipped with the wisdom. Your hands must be taught to fight. There is a technology to remain. Listen, when God vets your stability spiritually, it becomes more profitable for you to leave you at that realm than to waste your life by bringing you increase. Apostle, can God expand me and give me 10,000 members? My brother, the dynamics of managing the realm of the spirit and managing the realm of men with that level of influence, you, you can hate something God gave you because you were not prepared for it. I want to become a global voice. I want people to hear me across every continent. And the realm of the spirit vets you. The level of pride that is in you. The devil will not even have to fight you. By yourself you will die. Are we together? Hear me. Make sure before you help people, find out who is keeping them where they are. Because you see, the anointing was only designed to fight what is against the will of God. So you need to understand that the person you are trying to lift, verify whether it is a demonic interruption that is keeping the person there. It may be God keeping that person because there are things to learn. And you may hurry people into seasons they are not matured for. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased. Another version will say Jesus grew. I like the word grow. Grow is not just increase. Grow is increase. Honoring time and honoring knowledge. To grow does not just mean to increase. To grow means to increase as supervised by seasons and as supervised by knowledge. It is a risk to obtain things without growth. That's why God programs seasons. No matter how glorious the baby in the womb of a woman is, she will not get pregnant after. You can only pray for grace to endure, not to reduce nine months. To two weeks it does not mean God cannot do it there is something that both the mother and the baby that nine months was designed to do something in both of them 
If women gave birth in only two weeks, we'll be dead already in the end. Are we together? Because we would not even have the capacity to manage the inhabitants on the earth. Number two, there is, there is an emotional connect between the woman and her baby. It takes an extended period for it to build. The Bible says in Matthew 25, when you read from verse 14 and 15, talking about the parable of the talents, it said he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto another two talents. He gave unto one one talent. Not according to his love for them, but according to their several capacities. In fact, did we title tonight's message? Write it. Building capacity for increase and enlargement. Building capacity for increase and enlargement. The Bible says he gave one five and one two and one one. When you read this story, you see, it looks very simple. All of them had challenges. They had challenges that were peculiar to what they were given. The person who was given five... His challenge is complacency and pride because he, he was the highest to be given there. So that man had to manage complacency and pride. The guy given to had to manage jealousy, the humility to learn from the person who had five. Are we together? And the admittance that someone was clearly better than him. I can tell you how his two became four. He learned from the one who turned five to ten. The guy who was given one, you can see that the giver was right to have given him one. He loved all of them. If you were like me, I would have seen the guy with one and said, God, you can't do this to this man. I would take some of my five and give him and destroy the man. You can see that that gift of one was even an act of mercy. Watch how he responded to the owner. The Bible says he was a lazy man and he went and buried it. You bury seeds, not talents. When you bury seeds, you are right. But when you bury talents, you are wrong. Are we together? He comes for accountability, the owner now. And he says, I know who you are. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. Look at all the things that were in that man. Offense. Look at the things that will stop him from becoming the five talent man. He was speaking to the owner. I know you are a hard man. I don't fear anybody. You like reaping where you did not sow. I only did you a favor to even keep it. Here is your one. And he looked at him. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. Other version to say slothful. That means you are a wicked and lazy man. Two serious things. To be lazy is sin. Both Satan and God can not use you if you are lazy. Because whether it is Satan or God, it will require diligence. Whether you want to be a herbalist or you want to be a serious man of God, you still need diligence. You will not be useful to any of them. And then you are wicked again. Look at what was hiding in that man. Now hear me. I hope that man is not you. I hope that man in the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, things. Not in the beginning, anointing. Not in the beginning, power. Not in the beginning, gifts. As wonderful as these things are, they only draw their relevance to your life to the degree to which it becomes the epicenter of your focus. Show me a man whose obsession is just acquiring things. I show you a man who is a risk to himself and to others. Mary had many things to do with her time, but she forgot everything and she kept looking. 
It takes time to know God. It takes time to find Him. The way you create that time is by placing value on Him above every other thing. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Until there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Listen. If there is any secret behind the life of this man you see by the privilege of God's grace, I will tell you. It is because by the Spirit of God, he brought me to a point where sincerely without any sense of pride, there is absolutely nothing in this life, nothing in this life that sustains the power to take his place. I will close down ministry a thousand times. And I'm not just saying this because I'm on stage. You want to know the secret behind the jealousy of God invested in certain men? vet their passion for him not their passion for his hand their passion for his heart my son give me your heart Amen. hallelujah there are testimonies I cannot begin to share they will sound like pride but when you get to that realm you see the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store. It defines those who will be beneficiaries of it. For them that love him, not them that pray to him, not them that study scriptures, them that love him. There are realms that only lovers can understand the dynamics in that realm. There are rooms in your house that even your family members may not have access to. The inner chamber of the king is for those who love him. Listen, there is a way that you can love the Lord so much, he will take someone's prayer request and give you as a gift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Oh dear. Hallelujah. One time, a group of gentlemen, it was a real estate company, they came to me and they came to greet me and say, Apostle, we entered a covenant with God that anywhere around the world we build our estate, your house must be there. I don't want to tell you how many houses they have built. I've not even gone to them. And yet, many people would not pay attention to God. You ask them why. They say, listen, I need to complete this project. You complete it by forgetting about it and focusing on it first. Because if it does not speak, there is nothing to hear. If it does not reveal, there is nothing to see. But it is only in his light that we see light. Have you placed that kind of value on the Lord Jesus? Businessmen, do you have times when you shut down doesn't matter who is calling you and it doesn't matter what project is on ground. Let your allies know that before you became, there was one who made you. Now, see, unbelievers understand this. There are times you call them and they tell you, I'm doing all kinds of incantations. They don't hide it because it is the basis of their strength and confidence. There are many men of God by reason of this teaching you need to shut down on many aspects of ministry and renew your relationship. You have become a preacher, no longer a lover of Jesus. There are realms where preachers cannot enter. There are realms where businessmen cannot enter. There are time, realms where no matter what your Greek and Hebrew is, you cannot enter. It takes your pass is your love. That you get to that point and you are not talking things. You are talking him. Lord, I'm here because I love you. I'm here because you are everything to me. 
You are here because you are my life and you are my wisdom. I love you more than money. I love you more than cars and houses. Let everything truly fade. And God says, in the midst of this plenty, and say, Lord, I remember you. You picked me from nothing and you brought me to this level. If you never lift me, I am still grateful. The hearing ears and the seeing eyes. Beloved in Christ, thank you for watching this video. If you are new here too, I would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel for me and then hit on the like button. Also, I would want you to share this message across. I would want you to do one thing for us. Kindly tell us in the comment section where you're watching us from and you've got any testimony for us. Kindly let us know. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain